Local barrister at law Julian Jack says while crime is an issue in any society, it is not one that can be solved overnight. Jack was speaking at a panel discussion on Thursday evening looking at the cause and effect of crime and violence in SVG. A search for economic solutions. At the event, which was hosted by the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Christian Council, the lawyer says that Vincentians must pay attention and answer the questions of how crime prevention can be reduced and the antisocial events of how judicial influence can get criminals to seize. Jack called for juvenile justice reform while the youths will not be prosecuted under the same measures. In the discussion stating that there must be a road map for the way forward, beginning with every single Vincentian. Looking down to mechanisms such as community watch, we need to see a lot more in terms of education. We need to see a lot more involvement in the schools. We need to see um, environment not simply by the teachers you know, and the parents, but of course the businesses and the school. And provide the framework for the schools to have a way of educating to accept conflict resolutions. Conflict resolution is part of the strategy to fighting crime. So we have inculcated in the minds of our young people that they will not need to adopt violence as a way to address their problems. And that they can tell them from that. There's an alternative. You know. Outlining that drugs are a major concern for society today, with about 80% of murders being drug and gang related, Police Superintendent Camicia Blake Byam highlighted some of the problems faced by the police force. Superintendent Byam called for the church to get more active with crime prevention measures, noting that they are the backbone of society. She says that the business of eradicating crime, both here and everywhere, is also a Vincentian issue. Is as losing our young people. If you go to the, some of the traditional churches, the Catholic, the Anglican, and the Methodist, which I frequent sometimes with my other relatives, you see that the congregation is predominantly the older folks. Our Sunday schools are depleted. I see my past Sunday school teacher, there, Miss Thompson, and we see, and I think the church have a role to keep and hold our young people. I think the style sometimes needs adjusting to ensure that our attention of our young people, that they want and desire and yearn to come to church. And once you get them to the church, the church has a role in ensuring that they stay there. Medical Registrar at the Mental Health Center, Dr. Karen Providence, applauded the large number of male present at the discussion, noting that this signifies hope as it is biologically proven that men are more violent than women. Dr. Providence outlined the role of individuals mentally and stably, and she commits uh, that crime using numerous research methods information to show how various mental disorders and depression and peer pressure can lead to persons committing criminal acts. Dr. Providence noted that there is greater need for others, in particular the youth, to be addressed. When I wish that I had a mentor, a gentleman, who I can introduce a young man to, a young boy, and say, help him. So we have one less criminal or one less young man admitted to our mental health center whose life will be forever interrupted. Because it was just recently that I, I learned that if you're diagnosed with a mental disorder, you shouldn't even be voting. So do we understand what happens to our children when at 16 and 17 and 18 and 19 they are diagnosed with a drug-induced psychosis the rest of their lives. When that diagnosis limits them, it puts a cap on so much of what they can achieve. Agreeing with the wealth of knowledge shared at the discussion, Bishop Sonny Williams reflected on his own experience as a child, noting that he was once violent. 
He says that such behavior still inculcates in many adults today and advocating for the church to be more active in the society's development. He warned that the church must be careful in how they portray images of the Bible used to excuse for violence against women and children, noting that persons normally run to the church seeking refuge for, before the police. It can work for others. So the, the, the task is ours because for in a number of the domestic violence, our priests, deacons, lay ministers, pastors are very often the first responders. They tend to call us before they call the police. And we have to help and we have to become very sensitive to the kind of, of advice that we will offer to these persons in crisis. Featured speaker at the Theological Reflection and Panel Discussion, Bishop Jason Gordon, pointed out his concerns to the certain problems in society which he says affects the country's development. Gordon outlined that in order to keep the country from being divided, these issues must be addressed, namely the role of leaders, drug and drug legalization, as well as respect for others. The, the role of leaders in society, and all leaders, religious leaders, civil society, business, government, politicians, all leaders. What's our role in society? Once we think our role is about getting what we can for ourselves, which is the WIIFM, the country is going to continue to be in trouble. Privilege means the decor to sacrifice for the next generation and the generation after that. And I think that this is something that we have to look at again. What's the role of leaders in society and how do leaders play the role of development for the nation? We have a serious problem with drugs in our society. Some are pushing for legalization. I have had six young men who have had psychosis. They've literally break, broken down and I've had to take some of them into a mental institution and spend three months to recover. I could never advocate for legalization. But putting a marijuana user in a cell with a hardened criminal seems to me to be counterproductive. Because we're talking about two totally different things. We have a, a new prison that actually has sections where you can put people in different places. And I don't know why it is young offenders are put with hardened criminals. And why it is we don't have a block there for people who are marijuana and juice or, or that's their crime. And we do we have for them. And others where we do education and development for them. So that when young people on their first offense come out of prison, they have a better chance of not going back into prison. Why are we not working? And, and this wouldn't take much because the facility is there. There's a basic disrespect that there is across our areas from one part of, of the society to the next on the street corner and in every aspect of society where you hear people with disrespectful ways speaking to each other. You know, Rwanda used to do that and one day they woke up and they realized there was a massacre. We have to be a lot more vigilant of the hate speech that we engage in because if you carry it too far, you don't come back from it. And one of the things that we, we need to do is look at the way we're speaking with each other and whether that really means that we have respect for each other. British High Commissioner to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean states, Victoria Glenis Dean, says that the £300 million for economic grant awarded to the region will ensure that the infrastructure and other aspects of the Caribbean is developed. In an interview with Tony Regisford, Glynis Dean says the grant monies approved by the British government and announced by Prime Minister David Cameron on his recent trip to Jamaica will enable Caribbean countries to use the monies to develop various sectors. Now, economic infrastructure is really what he sees and has identified as one of the biggest barriers to growth in some of these countries. This is really about the kind of work that governments have to do and the money they have to spend on things like roads and bridges and ports and energy and broadband and transport and connectivity. Some of those things that 
if they're not really delivered for citizens, hold back the country's opportunity to really grow. And what governments are having to do at the moment is go further and further into debt in order to fund that work, because it's the kind of work that's necessary. Uh, and what this uh, new aid package will do is allow governments to receive grants, not loans, so grants that don't have to be paid back for those kinds of projects, which will allow them to deliver economic infrastructure for their citizens without having to go into increased levels of debt. Commissioner Glennis Dean says there are established criterions which are used by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or ECD, to, to select countries that will be receiving the grants. It's for all countries, it's not for British, specifically for British aid. So these are the same standards that have applied for years and years, um, that all uh, industrialized countries apply, which determine when a country can receive aid and access to concessional financing and when it has moved into a higher uh, income bracket, which means it can no longer receive that. So we're only applying those existing standards. There's no new or specific or different set of criteria that will apply to this fund. So um, it's not really broken down into types of aid. So um, uh, a country like St. Vincent is eligible and therefore can receive aid from all countries who are who adhere to these standards and are, and are members of the OECD and can continue to do so, to be eligible for aid-type funding um, up until the point where, uh, which is I think what we're all aiming for, isn't it, where it no longer needs it. Minister of Foreign Affairs, Senator Camilo Gonzalez, says he is pleased with the outpouring of support given for the Dominica Benefit Concert slated for tomorrow night at Victoria Park. In a recent interview with SVG TV News, Senator Gonzalez outlined that he has been witnessing an outpouring of unity, particularly from the artists, corporate sector, and the youth. We have so many acts. We're starting the show at 6 o'clock. And when we say we're starting it at 6 o'clock, we mean we're starting it at 6 o'clock sharp. Um, so come out early. Because if you don't, you're going to miss one of the artists that you that you wanted to see. We're starting six on the dot. Um, so really, head out there and get in line and, and be in the venue for six o'clock. Don't leave home at six o'clock. Be at Victoria Park for six o'clock. We're going to start on time. We're going to try to run as tight a ship as possible um, so that everybody has a good time and still gets home before it's too late. And it is a manifestation of the spirit of unity uh, and togetherness that that we have in the Caribbean and that young people have. You know, there's a lot of talk about how young people are only into things for themselves and they're not conscious and they're not integration-minded and, and all sorts of things that people say about young people sometimes. But it's not true because every time, in my experience, there's a tragedy, whether great as this one, or even small in the, in the village or neighborhood sense. You see young people coming forward with empathy and compassion to help. Senator Gonzalez also outlined some of the acts for the Dominica Benefit Concert. People like Half Pint, if you like Dance Hall, uh, we have people like T.O.K., if you like more conscious Dance Hall, we have people like Sizzler, if you like uh, classic Vincentian Calypso, we have people like Beckett, um, more current stuff, you have people like Fireman and Luther and, and James E.P. Um, we have something for everyone, and we're really hoping that everybody turns out for this event.